Good morning, everybody, and thank you for joining us. I am Simon Bittleston, uh, and it's with great pleasure that we welcome all of you to the Anthony Pearson 90th Birthday Symposium. And in particular, welcome to Anthony and his children to this day to celebrate his life in science. Anthony's breadth of science and interests is reflected in the exciting agenda for today and the extraordinary response that this has generated with more than 450 people registered. Uh, later today, I'll give thanks to all the people who have been involved in organizing today, but there's been a great number of people uh, who have been involved. We have a very busy day ahead, a very interesting day ahead. So let me introduce our first speaker, uh, Herbert Hubbard, FRS. Herbert has been a proud fellow of King's College Cambridge for more than 50 years and one of the key organizers of this event. He has been a very close friend of Anthony throughout his career, both of them having been editors in the, at the Journal of Fluid Mechanics and also working along, alongside each other in Cambridge. Herbert was awarded a, a Royal Medal by the Royal Society this year for his contributions to the physical sciences. He has kindly accepted to start this event by taking us through Anthony's life and science. So I'm going to pass over to Herbert now. Okay, I hope you can all uh, hear me. It's uh, an enormous pleasure and honor to say a few words about uh, Anthony on this his uh, 90th uh, birthday. Anthony uh, was born uh, just over 50, uh, 90 years ago uh, in Cairo. I think uh, because his parents were there. No, 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 because his mother was there. Um, and he grew up but then came back with the family in 1944 to uh, Britain, went to uh, Bedford uh, Modern School, and then did military service uh, in 1949, and then was an undergraduate in mathematics at uh, Trinity. While uh, there, he uh, met Emma Anderson, fell in love with uh, Emma, and she became his uh, bride in 1954 for a wonderful uh, marriage that lasted for more than 65 years. Unfortunately, Emma died uh, just at the beginning of this year, but I knew her well and she was a lovely, lovely uh, lady. Anthony then uh, came to do a uh, PhD and he joined the group of uh, G.I. Taylor and George Batchelor, who you see uh, here in uh, Trinity, and some guy who I couldn't get rid of, who's uh, just in the uh, background, uh, and Alan Townsend, when fluid dynamics was really doing extremely uh, well uh, in uh, Cambridge. He was supervised by Ian Proudman, and this is now his, uh, the first page of his uh, PhD uh, um, that he uh, submitted and was of course uh, awarded. Already as a PhD student, he wrote some fabulous uh, papers and continued uh, that. And here are some of his early uh, papers. The first, uh, Proudman and Pearson, uh, looking at the uh, difference, uh, and rather surprising, I think, but very important, between flow past a sphere and a circular cylinder at low Reynolds number, high Reynolds number, they're not so different at low Reynolds number, they're really quite different, more than a thousand citations. Looking by himself on uh, the effect of surface tension on convection cells. This was uh, made famous by uh, Lord Rayleigh, who explained uh, uh, Bernard's uh, experiments in 1917, interesting that in 1917, uh, <clears throat> Rayleigh was uh, very busy advising uh, the British on uh, World War I, but he still had time to uh, do his uh, very important work. But Anthony, in a sense, understood the fluid mechanics better and saw that surface tension was important uh, in uh, the uh, experiments, uh, the Marangoni effect, and that was really. That's got more than 2,000 uh, citations. 
and then uh, papers on turbulence all received very early, all published in the Journal of Fluid Mechanics. Uh, and we'll hear a little bit about that. And the important thing about uh, viscous flows uh, between rollers and uh, spreaders. Uh, the uh, Pearson couple lived in 23 Chaucer Road in beautiful grounds that had been initiated by uh, Emma's uh, grandfather, who was a fellow of uh, Trinity. And then after working a little bit uh, for a year or so in uh, various companies, Anthony came up to Cambridge to be a university teaching officer, as it's called, uh, in uh, the Department of Chemical Engineering, uh, shown uh, here uh, in uh, Cambridge. One of the things that was remarkable about chemical engineering, it was the first department in Great Britain to have its own computer. And here you see it, an IBM 1620. You see the size of uh, the computer and it needed an operator to uh, work it. And I'm just uh, talking using a MacBook Pro. So I'd like to ask you to think how many times slower was this super duper IBM 1620 than my uh, MacBook Pro? Well, the answer is about a million times uh, slower really quite uh, remarkable. And also, especially for the youngsters, this is how you programmed it, with cards, with little uh, uh, manipulations in the uh, cards. And if there was something wrong in any one of these cards, or if one of your colleagues came along and saw to it that there was something wrong by increasing the size of uh, one of these uh, breaks, you were in trouble, you couldn't do anything. Anthony also became uh, <clears throat> a fellow and director of studies of Trinity Hall, which has been in existence since 1350. If Anthony doesn't mind my saying a little more than 90 uh, years, he's uh, really not uh, that uh, old compared to uh, Trinity Hall, which he much enjoyed. He became a uh, assistant editor of the Journal of Fluid Mechanics, uh, the prestigious journal, which it still is, uh, in the fluid mechanics. Um, and assistant editor meant, I hate to say, doing all the copy reading. George Batchelor was not uh, very prone to uh, spend money, and he saw that he could get uh, Owen Phillips and uh, Anthony to do all the copy editing without having to pay them. Uh, now, this is uh, from the inside cover of the Journal of Fluid Mechanics, which uh, says basically uh, that it's to look at all theoretical and experimental aspects of the mechanics of fluids. And I might just say, just on this page, I could give a whole one hour's lecture, as I'm sure Anthony could also, as could Gray Worcester, the current uh, editor of uh, the uh, journal, which is still doing enormously uh, well. The thing that is fascinating about George is he managed to get in the editorial team six people who'd become FRSs, not one of them was at the beginning, they were too young. Uh, every English person he got became an FRS and three from America, including George Carrier, who uh, was extremely uh, well known. And Anthony played a very important uh, role in that uh, uh, position. He used to come to talks and uh, he has said for, uh, to me that uh, <clears throat> I made a point of questioning any lack of clarity or of uh, lack of real understanding in all talks. That's something he still does and does extremely well. And I know it sounds naive, but Anthony's belief is that you should present the question you want to uh, look at for the next hour, explain why it's important, give a clear, useful description of what you've done, and then a nice summary. As Anthony no doubt is thinking, but too many talks don't seem to do that. He also uh, developed a uh, family, and here's Anthony and Emma, 
and uh, the three boys and Sophie as a little uh, baby. And here they are again. Gee, it says here in March 2002. That can't be right. It's in 1962 with uh, <clears throat> Henry, George, Mark, and uh, Sophie, still a uh, baby. Anthony did a huge amount of very important scientific work, and we'll hear a lot about that uh, later. About 110 papers and four books, very important uh, books on a range of subjects, po uh, polymer uh, processing, singularities and deformations, really very important uh, contributions, and we'll hear quite a lot uh, about uh, that. He was also in his whole life a great sportsman. He played cricket, tennis, there's a tennis court even in the gardens of 23 Chaucer Road, squash and real tennis. I have to say, if Anthony doesn't mind, he wasn't really that superb a real tennis player. And I make that statement because he once very, very kindly agreed to play in a doubles competition with a total no-hoper. And the no-hoper hoped that they might win. But I'm afraid Anthony was not good enough to win this doubles tournament uh, competition that went on for many days with this no-hoper. Much to the no-hoper's uh, disappointment, but there it uh, is. Anthony continued to do uh, uh, work, uh, went down to uh, ICI, uh, consulted uh, enormously, and we'll hear quite a bit about that uh, later. And he then came up to Schlumberger and spent a considerable time in Schlumberger as a wonderful uh, scientific uh, mentor for people and instigator of new ideas and really helped Schlumberger enormously in their early years in uh, Cambridge. He then went to uh, BP, uh, the BP Institute, uh, which we'll hear about from uh, Andy Woods uh, uh, when it was uh, set up. And there he played an important role, talking to the graduate students, giving them advice, making comments in seminars of the sort. Why don't you say clearly what you're doing? Uh, always uh, very uh, important and useful in uh, my view. He was elected to uh, the uh, Royal Society uh, and here's the uh, certificate uh, proposed by John Hinch and you see in the bottom right he was elected on the 26th of May in 2005. I don't think Anthony has seen this uh, certificate or the uh, citation, which talks about his pioneering developments in fluid mechanics, as I've uh, mentioned, uh, Marangoni uh, convection, and really uh, so on and uh, so on. I might just uh, say that I first met uh, Anthony quite a bit uh, before this, when on the first Friday, when I went to the famous 4.30 uh, seminar uh, series, um, in 1968, I sat next to uh, George Batchelor, who I knew a little bit, and George turned round and said to me, this is Anthony Pearson, do you know him? And I said, no, but a Proudman and Pearson, wow. And Anthony's response to that was, I'm the director of studies in mathematics at Trinity Hall. Would you like to supervise for me this term? So that's my introduction to Anthony and how uh, I did supervise him for him that term and that was uh, fun. He's made enormous uh, contributions, continuing expanding in rheology, polymer processing, non-Newtonian fluid mechanics, flows through porous media, hydraulic fracking, very important, and multi-phase flows. And I could talk for the whole day about his contributions, and I'm sure Simon, who's next to me, would soon stop me, and he'd be quite uh, right. I would like to just end by making a few words uh, about uh, 
the later aspects of uh, Anthony and Emma's uh, wife. This was uh, celebrating their diamond wedding uh, anniversary. What I like most about this is here are the two cuddling their great grandchildren, but they're looking at each other. As much as I'm sure they love their great grandchildren, each other is most uh, important to uh, each of them. This was given to them uh, to celebrate their golden uh, wedding by uh, Schlumberger, a lovely photograph of uh, the two of them. And here's the whole family in front of the house in 23 Chaucer Road. And as an Australian, I don't understand why the ground is white, but maybe it snows sometimes. Anyhow, there are just over 30 people uh, in this uh, um, photograph. Uh, the original uh, Pearsons, their children and partners, their children and children uh, all going down. Just in case these photographs are just too small for you to recognize some of them, here they are. Uh, not all of them, but uh, quite a lot of them. And I'm ashamed to say I could tell you who the four people in the center are, but I'd have difficulty with the others. But maybe some of you watching can, and I'm sure Anthony can tell you about each one of them. I like this photograph because if uh, it, it's of uh, Henry, uh, his eldest son, and if Henry doesn't mind, my interpretation is Anthony is saying, even with my eyes closed, I can out-talk you and explain better uh, fluid mechanics, uh, though Henry has made a really wonderful contribution in his own uh, style. This, I think, is an important uh, summary of uh, what uh, his life has been like, looking adoringly at his great-great-grandchild. Uh, Here's a summary, born in 1930, 90 years plus five days ago, uh, degrees in Cambridge, Harvard, uh, tr uh, Trinity Hall, Foreign Associate, was done before he was in FRS, married, most important, uh, Emma uh, and uh, the uh, four children. Here he is going back to uh, Egypt uh, some time later. Now, what I don't understand about this photograph is this is a famous fluid dynamicist, and I don't see any fluid whatsoever, uh, <laughs> except, of course, in the atmosphere. That's uh, a fluid, but no liquid. It's all sand, sand, sand. But that's his uh, background. This is now a photograph that I took about a week ago uh, in uh, the garden. Uh, Anthony was, as always, in a very happy mood, but asking good questions, interesting, uh, or making interesting uh, statements. And so I think with that sort of summary, all I can say more is, happy 90th birthday, Anthony, and I look forward to organizing the same event in 10 years' time. Thank you very much. So thank you very much there. So what uh, we're going to do now is uh, move on to questions. So Anthony, maybe uh, while we're waiting for questions, it's uh, perhaps a, a riposte that you'd like to, uh, to give there to... Uh... <laughs> Did I explain clearly what I wanted to put over? <laughs> no, I'm anxiously waiting for Paul to give his uh, little talk. <laughs> Well, we will come on to that, but before that, you know, I, I, I think uh, there are a few things you might say. A few things that I might say. Well, I had a thought that when I was in Egypt, I'd never actually heard of Cambridge, except that that's where the atom was being split. Uh, in 1938, I think it was. Um, and when I went back to uh, Bedford Modern School, I still hadn't heard of Cambridge until three, uh, my th last year there. And uh, the maths master who'd come back from the war effort suggested to, to my brother and I that we put in for scholarships at Trinity. And uh, well, as you 
probably know we both got scholarships to Trinity at that stage. And so from there on, you've heard the rest. <laughs> <laughs> Which was a, a fantastic story. 